Hello, I'm Patrick from the Babylon team, and I want to welcome you to our final video for 2019. And in this one, we decided we wanted to put together a little demo for you to show off some of the cool things we've got going in Node Material, as well as go over some simple things that we've done in the past, like uh, particle systems and uh, some other things like music and typography. So let's jump right in. Uh, so what you can see here is we've got a very small scene, a uh, low poly tree. And what I'm going to do is kind of show you first what we've done and then walk you through some of the things that we did to make it happen. So um, as you can see, we've got some custom typography here. Um, this is using the Babylon GUI system. And uh, you can see right at the top here in the playground uh, that we will link down in the description below, um, we are loading in a type kit. So we, we grabbed a custom uh, font from Typekit and then loaded it into our Babylon scene so we can use it in our GUI. Um, so you can see we're using uh, a hover state in our GUI menu, uh, detecting whether the mouse is in or out of the button state, and then changing the, the color of the type based on uh, the focus of the mouse. Um, and then as I click on this, you'll see a few things start to happen. So the first thing is we've got a very simple uh, particle system to drop snow on our scene, but then you'll see some other things that are not too expected. So the first is we're blending between a few textures you can see here, and then we've also got some displacement going, um, and you can also hear we've got uh, some music playing as well. So um, let me stop all of this, and we will kind of walk through this step by step because there were several things that happened all at once. So our particle system is, is just a very simple uh, standard particle system. And let me scroll down to where we have our particle system down here in our code, uh, right about here. Um, so we're just using a simple uh, dot. Uh, it, it's a, a circle texture in a particle system. Um, we're creating uh, a limit of 4,000 particles at about 300 uh, emit rate uh, per tick, and then um, we've got uh, a lifetime of about seven seconds. And that, what that does is it'll, that takes an account from where it spawns out of screen, so you don't see the, the particle system spawning until it hits the ground. We measured that out to be about seven seconds. So that's our particle system life. Um, and then we've got uh, a little variation in size. We've got a little uh, gradient in color, so they fade out at the end and don't pop out uh, and then the other cool thing is that we added this procedural noise. So uh, we're using a, a simple Perlin noise that animates the texture. So you can see, um, let me start up this particle system again. You'll see as the, the snow is falling, it does kind of wave back and forth. Um, and so this, it gives a, a nice feel to the particle system and uh, a little bit more um, simulation of air resistance on a, a very light particle. So. Um, that really, that really uh, set up a really nice snow simulation. And so we started with that. And then we decided as we were looking at this, um, we wanted to do something with node material. And so um, you can see right now what we're having is a little displacement in the mesh. And then we are transitioning between a couple of different textures. And so we're doing all of this in, in node material. Um, the, the cool thing about it is that uh, no material allows us to do whatever we really want to with the, with the materials. And so we can get into animating uh, vertex positions. We can blend between multiple textures. Um, we can put animations into this by exposing a parameter and driving it through a Babel anima animation system. Um, really, the sky's the limit here. And so uh, what I did is I set up a, a low poly scene here. Um, and the way I modeled this was to uh, model it in its finished form. So we had all the, the hills the way we wanted them, and then the tree sat in it the way we wanted them. And we knew that we were just going to flatten it all out to a, uh, a zero point uh, so that the ground was flat, and then we would displace them to their final positions. Um, and so when I was setting this up, I, I made that uh, determination in Maya to set the ground plane, the zero world uh, plane, um, so that it was easy for us to uh, offset from between zero and the final position. Um, but uh, when we were thinking about how we're going to do displacement, there, there are a few issues that came up. So did we want to use a uh, displacement map, a uh, height map? Um, or did we want to use some sort of uh, per vertex data? And because of the, the simplicity of the, the mesh, 
being primarily a cube and then offsetting uh, some of the resolution on the top of the cube, um, I decided rather than trying to mask out uh, the vertices that we did not want to move, um, it was easier to do that masking in Maya rather than doing it in texture. And so what I did was I used vertex color on the vertices that move and I assigned their final position in centimeters. So uh, everything, uh, the scene is actually really small. Uh, I think it's a unit, um, a centimeter unit uh, is, is the way it was modeled, which translates here into a meter unit. Um, but the displacement on these vertices is under one unit. So it goes from zero to under one so that I could keep the the uh, the data right in the red channel of the of the vertex color, and so what we're doing is we're using the the vertex color itself to mask uh, which vertices will trans or will uh, displace, and so if there was no red in the in the vertex color, then it doesn't displace, and if there is red, then we know how high it goes, and so it goes between zero and the value of the red channel in the in the vertex color. Um, and then the other part of it was um, I knew I wanted to blend between these two uh, textures. So we've got the grass texture that mor that morphs into uh, kind of a sheet of snow before displacement happens, and then we have it on the tree as well, where the snow kind of crawls up the edges, and so. Um, I had to come up with a way to uh, UV the, the meshes and make some um, uh, noise textures so that we could use that as kind of a blend between the two textures and then use step nodes to, to animate them. So that's kind of the, the majority of, of what we've done. Um, and then uh, I think we've got down at the top here maybe. Um, Yes, right here. Uh, so we've got our music uh, set in here, and then it's basically uh, fading in and out based on button press. So as we press the start snowing button, uh, the music will fade in, and then as we hit the stop snowing button, the music fades right back out again. And so um, you can break down this whole playground, and you'll see you know all of the the animations that we're using and uh, the different elements for GUI and different elements for you know loading in the type, custom typefaces and music. So uh, the one thing I do want to do is takes a, a couple minutes to go through the shaders in the node material so that you can kind of see what we've done. And I also wanted to highlight a couple of the, the new features which uh, David had, had talked about in the past um, and see them in action. So the first one I wanted to show was uh, our frame system. And you can see uh, we've got two nodes here that look different than the rest of the nodes. They don't have the black top and they don't have the rounded edges. Uh, so these are actually frames. And you can see there's a lot of inputs and a lot of outputs based on what is in the frame itself. And I've collapsed the frame down just because it makes it really easy to have a very complex function that I don't want to look at all the time and then collapse it down and make my, my graph a little bit more orderly. Um, so we have displacement and we have lighting. And I'll open up the lighting one first. Let me drag it over here so as I open it, uh, it doesn't uh, obscure the other nodes. So you can see as I pop that open, um, we've just got our simple light node with our uh, standard setup for our blindfong. Um, and then I'm pumping uh, the textures into the light node. Um, but I didn't want to have all these nodes out there, so this is a really nice way to just collapse it uh, move it out of the way, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, and then the first thing we'll look at here, since we had the light node open, um, you'll see the diffuse color is actually coming from the lerp node. And what we're doing is we've got two textures. Uh, we've got, um, this is uh, for the ground itself, and uh, you can see there's a, a center brown part that's kind of dirt that sits where, right under where the tree sits. Um, and then the two uh, brown spots on the sides are the sides of the uh, the ground. So the top is the grass, and the sides uh, are that br are the brown stripes there. Um, and so what I did was I've got a second texture that is snow, and it also has the brown sides. And, and the reason I did that is I didn't want to have to mat uh, to mask out just the top of the plane in any way. And so having uh, the sides be the same in both textures, it means that it doesn't matter. 
uh, if I'm showing one texture or the other, the sides will look exactly the same. And so we don't have to worry about any extra nodes to do any fancy masking when I can just put that in the texture and then it, it hides uh, the transition just fine. Um, and so uh, the other thing you'll notice is I've got uh, an alpha channel coming out and that alpha channel has um, kind of a noise texture with a lot of range in uh, between black and white. And what I did was I placed some of those nodes where I knew um, I wanted the, the snow to start first um, and uh, end last. So, um, so for example, uh, if we know black areas are gonna fill in with snow first, then um, I kept the black areas out towards the edges and then the white areas underneath the tree so that the, the um, ground underneath the tree is the last thing to get snow. <clears throat> and so, then um, beyond that, it's just a very simple smooth step operation. So we've got um, uh, a couple of floats that have been exposed, and that way you can tweak right in the, the inspector if you want to play with the values and see how it works. Um, but we can, we can look at, um, let me grab a plane here. And um, if I take our transition float and scale, you'll see how we translate between one and the other. And let me turn on this extra light so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so the, the noise texture in the alpha channel is what's creating the blend between the two textures. And the way we're doing that is um, we've got uh, a float that is driving uh, the two edges in a smooth step. So we could use a step function and just use one float in a, in a step. And then uh, when you drive that edge, um, you will just get either black or white, whether it's um, above or below the, the value that you're, you're pumping in. But the problem is, is that that edge is pixelated. So it's really harsh. Um, smooth step is actually kind of nice because we, we give you two edges. And so it's, there's an upper edge and a lower edge. And so basically um, there's a blend in between the upper and lower edges. And so the wider you make it, the longer the blend and the closer you make it, the, the, the thinner the blend. And so what I did is I just um, used one float uh, plus or minus a little bit. Um, and then that becomes our two edges. And then that is driven into the gradient on the LERP that says uh, which of the two textures is actually being pumped in as the diffuse texture. So that, was, that works really well. Um, both the tree and the ground are using that. And so uh, wherever you see snow kind of fading from uh, grass or um, pine to, uh, to snow, that is the, the method that we're using in both the shaders. Um, the ground has a little bit extra to it. Um, so that this, this is in both the tree shader and the ground shader, but the, the ground does have the displacement as well. So for displacement, it's a little bit more complicated. So let me open this one up and drag it out to the side here. So what I did is um, you can see we're feeding in mesh color and we're splitting it out so that we, we only care about the red channel in, in the, the vertex color. Um, and so um, what we're doing is we're setting a, a base minimum of the height of the vertices. So it's you know 0 0.05. And we're lurping between 0 0.05 and the value of the red channel. So let's say the value of the red channel is uh, 0 0.9. So we're going to alert between 0 0.05 and 0 0.9, and that is the, the range at which uh, the vertex will animate. And so um, basically, we're using a gradient uh, from another standard float and animating that float with the Babylon anim animation system. And so um, we're taking our, our uh, mesh position, uh, splitting that out uh, so that we can take the X and Z positions because we don't want X and Z to move at all. We're only concerned with the Y position in the vertex and uh, assembling that with our LERP between our base 005 and the, uh, the max in the red channel. Um, and then that is fed into the, the world position for the vertex. So that gives us a really uh, cool way to uh, move the vertices up and down. But the problem with that is that um, the mesh itself is baked with um, the normals that were in the mesh. So as, as we have the hill, all the normals are pointing the way they're supposed to. But when we move the, the vertices, the normals don't change at all. We're just 
moving the vertices so that when we flatten it all out, we would have the wrong lighting calculation because uh, all the normals should be paint pointing up, but they're still pointing in the direction from the file that the way the normals were baked. So we have to we have to do something with that as well. So uh, what we did there is we know when the normals are flat or when the, the surface is flat, all the normals point up, which is 0, 1, 0 as a vector 3. Uh, and so what we did is we took the mesh normal and the uh, the vector 3 that we created, 0, 1, 0, and we lerp between those two. And so we're using the same offset as um, the, the gradient on the height. We're also feeding it into this lerp between the normal spacing straight up and the original mesh normal. So then we're getting a blend both between um, the final normal and straight up normal, as well as the minimum distance and the maximum distance of the of the offset. So um, that worked out pretty well. Um, it was very specific to the scene, uh, but we wanted to show a way you could uh, kind of use a bunch of different techniques and put them all together to get something that, that worked out pretty well in the end. And so um, to go one more time, just to let you see all of this working in motion, you can see we've got our particle system. Uh, we got some GUI text coming in. Um, we've got the blends between the two textures happening right now. And then finally that offset in the, in the vert vertex height. Um, and so that is, that is our scene. Uh, we will have it linked down in the description below. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Um, and uh, feel free to take this scene, peel it apart, you know, do whatever you want with it. We'd love to see what you, what you do with either these techniques or with this scene itself, uh, and hope you have a lot of fun. And uh, no matter where you are or how you celebrate, uh, the Babylon team sends to you our warmest wishes for this holiday season, and uh, we will see you again in 2020. Take care.